participants uh, let us have uh, another uh, session so let me invite uh, invite next speaker so next speaker uh, of uh, day 4 uh, is uh, uh, dr m sri ram chandgaru dr m sri ram chand uh, has received uh, his btech of civil engineering from acharya nagarjuna university and uh, uh, done his masters in structures from the phd in civil engineering from uh, national institute of technology varangal dr sri ram chand garu has a dead uh, his doctoral research area on performance and microstructure characteristic of self curing self compacting concrete which basically uh, concentrates on efficiency of self curing agents and self compacting concrete the performance studies includes like strength the durability test the microstructural studies uh, in which the microstructural studies include sem xrd etc was conducted he published 80 research papers in various international and national journals and uh, out of which 35 papers was published in sci journal he is a reviewer of construction and building materials and sci journals his research area includes self compacting concrete self curing concrete and strengthening of uh, concrete structures and structural dynamics at present uh, dr m sriram singaru is presently working as an uh, a uh, professor in department of civil engineering from sri chetana college of engineering karnataka telangana so it's my immense pleasure to uh, have uh, uh, the dr n sriram chandgaru to the day 4 lecture so i request uh, sir to please uh, continue the session with the second lecture of day 4 yeah good evening one and all good evening abhinay good evening sir thank you once again good evening one and all for the lecture series day four session here my presentation is basically on curing of concrete especially self curing self compacting concrete why do we require this type of concrete you have already seen self compacting concrete is necessitated where there is a congestion reinforcement so why should we go for self curing so how it is related to our lecture series as well as so uh, why this uh, topic is having its own importance let me explain about concrete in brief yes since four days we are talking regarding concrete is the most versatile material for construction it can be formed into required shapes as uh, it is having like uh, it can be poured in the required shape dimensions surface textures and aesthetic designs if you observe basically the concrete is facing with major two problems one is compaction another one is curing compaction at the first stage curing at the hardened stage if you observe compaction so yes in 1986 uh, professor h ogamura in japan he developed self compacting concrete uh, why this self compacting concrete was developed first one is to decrease the number of labor content and to avoid noise which is caused due to vibration of concrete at compaction so yes at first stage if you use self compacting concrete then definitely we can come out of the a problem related to compaction but whereas curing so after concrete is hardened when the concrete is gaining its strength we know that uh, certain reactions are going to take place during the hydration process so at that stage if sufficient water is not available on the surface of the concrete then it is leading to different adverse effects so concrete requires sufficient curing during the hydration process particularly in the initial days where there is a lot of heat is being evolved all newly placed concrete should be adequately cured so why we are going for curing what is meant by curing it is a procedure that is adopted to promote the hardening of concrete under controlled conditions that is maintaining proper humidity and temperature which is useful to the progress of concrete to form the proper hydration products 
and we, it is required to maintain the control conditions of humidity and temperature. And we have already seen at the hydration of concrete, there is majorly these box compounds, C3S, tricalcium silicate as well as dicalcium silicate, when they are reacting with water, they are liberating certain amount of heat is liberated along with calcium silicate hydrate gel as well as calcium hydroxide. So here I am showing you once again the graph between the rate of heat evolution versus time. We have seen that there is induction period, there is dormant period, there is initiation period and final period is there. At all these stages certain heat is being evolved. If any query is there. Yeah, so sorry. So when a certain amount of heat is being evolved, that is to be taken care of with proper curing. Mm -hmm. So to decrease self desiccation to achieve required strength and durability properties, we require curing of the concrete. And this curing can be done in two ways. Basically, if I classify them, external curing, internal curing. This external curing we have already seen that like you might have seen when a CC road is constructed and they will construct a small pond type, the water will be stored in the small ponds. On the slab also, after concrete sets, then you might have seen that the people, they will uh, construct a small ponds and the water will be poured in that one and you will keep it for certain age, certain days. So this conventional water curing, you can see that water bonding and you might have seen for the columns, water spraying is done, fog misting is done, saturated covering is nothing but gunny bags. So you might have seen that uh, uh, to maintain proper humidity and temperature, the gunny bags are wetted and saturation, certain saturation is done daily. And another uh, types from the external curing is nothing but sealed curing, that is waterproof paper, plastic sheeting and curing membranes. Now, but when there is possibility for external curing, definitely we have to go for external curing. At certain cases, we are unable to go for external curing. Like, for example, there is heavy, uh, large structures are there, high rise buildings are there, where supplying water from ground to these large structures, high, uh, high rise buildings, it is very difficult where slant structures are there, inclined members are there. For these inclined members, when you pour the water also, simply it will go off. So and this process and another point is we know that the scarcity of water is there. So when there is a scarcity of water, you are not getting quality water for mixing of concrete, but how can you get for curing of concrete? So when there is a scarcity of water, when there is poor quality water is available, you know that for mixing as well as for curing of concrete, at least portable water is required. As per IS456, if you see the pH of concrete is to be maintained in between 6.5 to 8. So if all these natural conditions are not available, when there are inclined members are there, for example, C, canal lining is there. For canal lining, there are you know that slope lining will be there. At these cases, if you do the curing also, the water is not retained and you can't maintain the controlled conditions of humidity and temperature. So at these conditions, definitely internal curing can be come into picture. So this internal curing, it will be having, once again, called into two categories, internal curing as well as internal sealing. Internal curing, it can be done with lightweight aggregates, super absorbent polymers, recycled aggregates, whereas internal sealing is with the help of self curing chemicals. So let us see what is meant by internal curing. ACA 308H, it is American Concrete Institute. It defines about internal curing, supplying water throughout a freshly placed cementitious mixture using reservoirs that readily release water as needed for hydration or to replace moisture lost through evaporation or self desiccation So let us see here what's happening. Just uh, let me explain you the advantages of this internal curing, then I will go uh, to the definition once again. 
highly required in high performance concrete as we are adding low water cement ratios. This internal curing distributes the extra water uniformly throughout the entire concrete mixtures, microstructure, and it maintains high relative humidity, avoids the self desiccation. So, self desiccation is nothing but uh, when there is a, a reaction taking place, there is a volume changes will happen. So, that is reduces autogenous shrinkage, autogenous deformation and creep, less early age cracking, and enhanced the hydration. And this internal curing provides a proper hydration and hence the strength can be increased. So just, just let us see what are the internal curing chemicals that are available. Here lightweight aggregates are there. So you have seen lightweight aggregates can be cinders, uh, blotting sh shale, leca, LECA. So these type of materials can be used as lightweight aggregates and recycled concrete aggregates. So we know that uh, the concrete, demolished concrete can be cut into the pieces and this can also be acting as an internal curing agent. I will explain you what is the advantage of these recycled aggregates. And the next one is super absorbent polymers. You might have seen these super absorbent polymers are having a large water retention capacity. And we are using these super absorbent polymers in napkins and diapers to retain the water, to retain the moisture. And internal sealing is with the help of self curing chemicals. So basically here I am showing you two self curing chemicals. One is polyethylene glycol, another one is liquid paraffin wax. So internal curing chemicals here, uh, this uh, polyethylene glycol is called as hydrophilic chemical. Hydrophilic is nothing but which is having affinity to water. And second one is hydrophobic chemicals. These hydrophobic chemicals are having water repelling capacity. They are negative to like uh, one is attracting water and another one is repelling water. You know paraffin wax like uh, our candles only. Now just see the mechanism of this uh, internal curing with lightweight aggregates. When lightweight aggregates are added in concrete, you know that uh, Simply you won't pour these lightweight aggregates, they will be pre-wetted. So they will be saturated, uh, like before mixing in concrete at a fresh state, we will pre-wet it. So with, when you are doing pre-wetting, then what happens is, it will the pores present in the lightweight aggregate, they will be filled with the water molecules. You can see here, the left side image is showing about lightweight aggregate, whereas the right side image is showing about normal weight aggregates. So once again, if you see the top picture is regarding the fresh concrete, and the bottom one is regarding the hardened concrete. So before set, after set. So what's happening is, if you see the normal concrete, when the natural normal aggregates are used, if you go for high water content, this uh, what happens is a layer will be formed on the top of the aggregate which is leading to higher water content and this is the zone where interfacial transition zone is there so the accumulation of higher amount of water is making poor interfacial transition zone if you go for lightweight aggregate so what happens is initially these voids present in the lightweight aggregate they are filled with water before mixing in concrete then what happens is you know that if the concrete surface is exposed then there will be evaporation of moisture so continuous evaporation takes place so if the continuous evaporation is taking place in the cement paste there is no sufficient amount of water for reaction but what happens is in case of lightweight aggregates there is a two-way moisture movement between the porous lightweight aggregates and porous hydrated cement paste, which maintains high curl equilibrium. And in case of hardened concrete also, the same thing can be observed. And surrounding the aggregate, you can see here a dense and interfacial transition zone can be observed with the help of lightweight aggregates. Whereas in case of normal aggregates, this type of mechanism is not observed only 
the water accumulation is observed as you know natural aggregates they are very dense no pores are present only on the surface only the water is accumulated so that is the advantage of lightweight aggregates there the higher amount of moisture is there these lightweight aggregates they will absorb and and if the water is required for hydrated cement paste so this will release the water content but this lightweight aggregates can be used for low strength concretes only in case of high strength concrete then what happens as uh, rajeshri ma'am has explaining uh, as she is explaining about uh, the trans granular failure as well as uh, inter granular failure so the crack is uh, in the high strength concrete the crack passes through the aggregates so when the crack is passing through the aggregate here these lightweight aggregates are having less strength then definitely it will lead to the decreased strength properties so for high strength concretes using lightweight aggregate is not a proper solution and if i go for super absorbent polymers you can see when they are in contact with water at normal ph they will increase their volume by 500 to 1000 times but at a ph of 12 to 13 in case of concrete the ph is around 12 to 13 they will increase their volume 50 to 70 times so this super absorbent polymers uh, before adding in concrete they will be uh, like there is a slight increase in the water cement ratio so the extra amount of water is for the absorption of this super absorbent polymers and these super absorbent polymer addition in concrete act as a water pockets and during hydration the water will be released from these pockets uh, to the required place by pressure difference so whereas you have observed that lightweight aggregates or super absorbent polymers we can't use for high strength concrete definitely to achieve high strength that is more than m65 grade as per is456 then definitely you have to go for self curing chemicals so what is happening these self curing chemicals they are internally sealing the mixing water understand please understand here there is a difference between mixing water and curing water so here mixing water is nothing but the basic constituent materials you are taking cement coarse aggregate fine aggregate and water if super plasticizer is required you are taking this super plasticizer so when the mixing water is there what is the ideal condition is if this super, whatever the mixing water is properly maintained if you can avoid the evaporation of this moisture then definitely the water that is added during the mixing time that can be helpful for the proper hydration and in the normal cases there is a lot of pressure difference between the surface and due to this chemical potential difference between the vapor and liquid phases the continuous evaporation is taking place so when you add these polymers self curing chemicals are basically polymers when they are added they will form a hydrogen bond with water molecules and reduce the chemical potential of the molecules so just see here this is explained with respect to raoult's law in our simple chemistry if you compare component a is a water content in a concrete mix component b is a water soluble chemical water soluble chemical has less vapor pressure whereas water has high vapor pressure then both are mixed together then you can observe the resultant vapor pressure of the solution is decreased so this is the exact concept of self curing concrete when you are adding any self curing chemical the vapor pressure is decreased and then that is the mixture entire mixture vapor pressure is reduced so thus the evaporation of water can be minimized there are different types of self curing chemicals and just here i am stating we used two in our study we can use different studies in the literature if you search many researchers in uh, in the india in the national or international they used different types of self curing chemicals and all these self curing chemicals are potentially useful in concrete which are not giving any adverse effects definitely whatever we are adding so simply we can't add whatever i want so they should not be giving any harmful effects to the occupants 
yes, whatever these keratin chemicals are adding, they are not giving any adverse effects. So just let us see here, hydrophilic chemical polyethylene glycol. It is a polyether compound. You can see the structure of this one pen. This is coming in contact with water. It is the presence of hydroxyl and ether functional groups in water soluble chemicals as pH satisfy the requirements of self curing chemicals. So there is a hydrogen bond that is being formed. Whereas uh, here you can see here pH 200. 200 is nothing but which is in the liquid form, low molecular weight. PEG 4000 is higher molecular weight. There are different uh, uh, polyethylene glycol with varying molecular weights are available 200, 400, 600. And there is, according to the small change in the molecular weight, the percentage of addition in the concrete changes. That's it. So at uh, room temperature, polyethylene glycol is in liquid form, whereas polyethylene glycol 4000 is 200 is in liquid form, 4000 is in uh, solid form. So another one is liquid uh, paraffin wax. This liquid paraffin wax, uh, it is at room temperature, it is in the liquid form. You can see this is uh, hydrocarbons, hydrocarbon molecules with the general chemical formula of uh, CnH2 m plus 2. Now these are added during the mixing time with concrete. Now you can see here, uh, yes, uh, in the previous lecture, you have seen the advantage of self-compacting concretes. So these are the major properties that should be there for self-compacting concrete. And I am not going in detail about self-compacting concrete, but self-compacting concrete requires a self-curing. Just to see here, as more amount of powder content is there in self-compacting concrete, to hydrate all the powder particles, you require sufficient amount of water. So if you want to hydrate all the cement particles, to maintain them, to decrease the evaporation of water, as India is the tropical country where the temperatures are in the range of 50 degrees centigrade, typically in the range of 50 degrees centigrade temperature in summer. So there is a lot of evaporation that is happening from the surfaces of concrete. Due to the either non-availability of water or inaccessibility, concrete elements are not getting the deserving share of water required for curing to take place. So against this backdrop, it is felt that it will be good if the embedded water added while concreting can be retained. So that is the main concept of the self-curing. The water that is added, that should be retained for curing to continue the hydration process. So one is, yes, in concrete you require self-curing, but in case of self-compacting concrete, higher amount of water content requires a proper care. So to meet all this, uh, whatever the water that is added, during the mixing time that should be retained. So this can be done with the help of addition of self curing chemicals. Now, in case of recycled aggregate, you know that as the natural aggregates are not available, we have to go for a recycled aggregates. This recycled aggregate, if you see, I'm just showing you the optical microscopic image and some image, and as well as a picture, a schematic representation. These recycling aggregates are obtained by breaking the construction demolition base into required shape and size. So if you see the old ITJ zone will be there, old ITJ that is old interfacial transition zone will be there surrounding the aggregate. And whereas when you are adding new ITJ zone will be there. So the presence of pores in the concrete, they, are, they can be this recycled concrete aggregate can be as similar as lightweight aggregate. So the pores present in the recycled aggregate can be used as uh, uh, internal curing agents uh, to improve the performance of concrete. So just I am showing you uh, three mixes that we have taken to achieve 70 MPA strength, 50 MPA and 30 MPA strength. And when, this is the amount of uh, cement content that is added. Yes, uh, you know that as per IS-456, uh, the cement content is 450 kg per meter cube. But in case of uh, uh, mix here, we have taken 500 kg per meter cube to achieve high strength. In case of SCC, we don't have any limitation for the uh, cement content. We have limitation for powder content. And these are the fresh properties that uh, ma'am has explained to you. And as a self-compacting concrete, uh, it, uh, it has to satisfy the water retention capacity. So just here I'm showing you uh, the major basic test for self-curing concrete. 
as per HTMC 156, we have to see to identify the curing efficiency, water retention test is to be done. How you are doing this water retention test? Measuring the weight of the specimens. <laughs> Can you please mute yourself? Uh, thank you. So here, the water retention is nothing but you are measuring the curing efficiency by measuring the mass loss of the specimens at the end of 3, 7, 14, 21, 28, 56 and 90 days. So just see this diagram. I'm taking age of curing versus average mass loss. You can observe that AN is a representation for no curing. I didn't add anything, any curing chemical. Whereas here you can see 0.1 is nothing but the dosage, percentage of chemical that is added with respect to weight of cement. 0.1 percentage, 0.5 percentage, and 1 percentage. And I am showing you typically for four types of self-curing chemicals. You can observe that when the no curing chemical, there is no nothing is added, then there is an increase in the mass loss. But when you add these self-curing chemicals, there is a reduction in the mass loss. That means that the moisture loss is reduced. And when the moisture loss is reduced, then obviously there is an improvement in the mechanical properties. So just I'm showing for every particular self-curing chemical, there is an optimum dosage will be there, which can be, which can be obtained with respect to research study. From the research study with the availability of uh, uh, material, this dosage of uh, self-curing chemical will be deferred. And you can observe W is nothing but water curing, N is nothing but no curing. When I cure the concrete, we will achieve 75 MPA. But when you don't cure the concrete, which is left over, and it is there is a reduction in the compressive strength, which is 59 MPA. But whereas if you add self-curing chemicals, on par with the water curing, we are getting the required strengths. This is observed for high strength and standard strength concretes. So just understand here, this is my last slide of my presentation. So if you understand the compressive strength, typically I'm showing for polyethylene glycol 4000, which is hydrophobic, hydrophilic chemical, which is having affinity to water. So here I am comparing natural aggregate self-compacting concrete with the recycled aggregate self-compacting concrete. The amount of cement and water is same, but there is a change in the aggregate content. So just see here, if you see, if a normal concrete is achieving 100% strength with water curing, when no curing is there, there is a reduction of the strength by 22%. But while there is only 2% reduction with the help of self-curing chemicals. That means you need not do curing for 28 days or 14 days, specified age of curing. You need not do, just simply add these self-curing chemicals in concrete during the mixing time and they will take care of it. Somebody may ask me, what is the increase in the cost? And you can see polyethylene glycol is being used in food products. The cost is very much cheaper. And it is costing around half kg cost is around uh, 50 rupees, something like that in a bulk. And in case of recycled aggregates, if you compare AW and RAW, that is natural aggregate concrete and recycled aggregate concrete, there is a reduction in 20 to 1 percentage strength. This 21 percentage strength reduction is due to the material. That like if you compare natural aggregate and recycled aggregate, the poor quality of recycling aggregate is leading to the reduction in the strength. But however, when you observe, this recycling aggregate is also acting as internal curing agent. When you compare AW and AN, there is a 22% reduction, but RAW and RAN, there is 11% reduction is there. So that is the main advantage of this recycling aggregate in concrete. It is acting as internal curing agent in presence of uh, self-curing chemicals or without self-curing chemicals. So overall, what I would like to conclude is when there is no availability of water, when the scarcity is there and where the inaccessibility is there, at those places, definitely addition of these self-curing chemicals will be a better solution 
to improve the performance characteristics. Here I have shown you only the mechanical properties. However, durability. So when can you accept any material? When you study the performance of it. What is meant by performance? Mechanical as well as durability. So here we have studied about the durability also like uh, RCPT, ACPT. I don't want to discuss the results, but however, at each stage, self curing chemicals, when they are added with water, with uh, concrete, they are performing better. And one thing yesterday, some of you has asked me, uh, asked a doubt, what is the role of viscosity modifying admixer? So to maintain proper viscosity, otherwise what happens is uh, there is uh, a segregation and bleeding or if it is high viscous this is no flow property if you add polyethylene glycol so if you see the chemical name of the viscosity modifying admixer the viscosity modifying admixer some of the viscosity modifying admixes are chemically polyethylene glycol so in self-compacting concrete if i add polyethylene glycol it can be acting as a self-curing chemical and it is also acting as viscosity modifying admixer Pixels. So thank you, thank you one and all for giving me this great opportunity and thank you. So, thank you, thank you sir, thank you very much for an uh, informative session. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, sir, a few questions are there in the chat box, can I share those questions? Yes, okay. yes uh, someone is asking about uh, what is the setting time of uh, SEC self-compacting concrete? Basically, setting time of concrete, it is slightly get affected with the addition of superplasticizer. So when superplasticizers are added, so what happens is here there is one specific range of addition of superplasticizer. You know, superplasticizer is to be added. There are different types of there. Sulfonated naphthalene formaldehyde, sulfonated melamine formaldehyde, lignosulfates, as well as the last one is uh, uh, polycarboxylic ether based. So when polycarboxylic ether based superplasticizers are added, they should be added in the range of 0.8% to 1.8% by weight of cement. If you are not adding in this proportion, then definitely the setting time will be more than whatever that is specified as per Indian standards. So I, mean, I will take care of these questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, somebody is asking about hygral equilibrium. Hygral equilibrium is nothing but here I am explaining about the pores present in the lightweight aggregate as well as the hydrated cement paste. So, when the hydrated cement paste is not having sufficient water content, then the pores are having a water content. They will, through the pressure difference, the pores they will release the water and the hydrated cement paste gets proper hydration. If there is more amount of water content in the hydrated cement paste, then this water will be sucked into the uh, pores present in the lightweight aggregate. So that we call it as two-way hydrogen movement of water. So PEG is nothing but polyethylene glycol. And advantage and disadvantage is nothing but basically if you maintain the proper uh, head while uh, pouring the concrete while preparation it requires uh, uh, proper care. Why? Because uh, self-compacting concrete is highly sensitive with respect to temperature. You know, if high temperatures are there, then uh, my professor uses to say, so it like for example, uh, if the water content uh, there is, uh, it will be slightly affected with the water content. That's why every time as a site engineer or structural engineer, while pouring the self-compacting concrete we should be taking care of uh, this addition of superplasticizer and the amount of water content. If you add more amount of water content for workability, definitely the strength will be reduced. If you don't add the proper water content or proper superplasticizer, then definitely you won't get the required workability. Yeah, at uh, normal temperatures, there is no specific temperature mentioned regarding the self-compacting concrete, but however, when higher temperatures are there, then you have to change the water ratio. The site, it is the, with respect to the experience of the site engineer. Definitely the site engineer, he should be more attentive by understanding the 
uh, sensitive nature of the self compacting concrete. So generally fibers are added in self compacting concrete uh, to increase the tensile strength to bridge the crack propagation. There is no much effect on the steel reinforcement. If you see the study is different when you are asking the question regarding the fibers, these fibers they will act as a discrete reinforcement and normal reinforcement whatever we are adding steel we call it as continuous reinforcement. So this discrete reinforcement it can be added as an addition to the continuous reinforcement. Cost effective, cost difference is nothing but uh, yeah, I'm not showing you any study, particular study for one meter cube of concrete, but definitely there is no much variation in the concrete cost. At cost benefit ratio, we have to see, it is not only with respect to the material cost, we have to see the labor cost that is being used uh, during the construction time. So the cost benefit ratio, definitely self-compacting concrete, it is having more viability than normal concrete. So the self compacting concrete, somebody they may ask me uh, why it is not being used in the regular construction. Yes, it is being used in the major construction. Uh, if you observe only recent years only our Indian coral provisions are there. IS 10262 2019, if you observe the mixed proportioning of concrete in the latest revision of IS 10262, 2019 is specifying about self-compacting concrete and the fresh tests are being mentioned before only the literature or FMR guidelines are there, that is European Federation guidelines are there, but recently IS uh, 1199 part 6, 1199 part 6, it is mentioning about self-compacting concrete tests. Yeah, we are using Jadav, uh, why we are preferring the self-compacting concrete is nothing but when there is a congested reinforcement is there. You see, in, in some cases, beam column joints are there basically, you know, uh, at the beam column joints, then we will provide high reinforcement in the seismic point of view also. So in those cases, definitely, if there is a congested reinforcement is there, definitely the option is nothing but use this self-compacting concrete, which can uh, fill all the corners uh, without any external vibration or with minimal vibration. It, it need not require any needle vibrator or plate vibrator uh, as the needle, it can't go inside and it can't penetrate between the congested reinforcement. So in those cases, definitely the use of the self compacting concrete is a better option. I hope uh, I have thrown some light on this uh, self curing concrete as well as self compacting concrete. Definitely, whatever the lecture series we are going to uh, deliver right now, it may not meet all the requirements, but however, it will throw some light on the uh, thought process. So, uh, thought, we would like to ignite the thought process of our budding civil engineers. So, you can continue some research in the area of concrete. And definitely you as a civil engineer or site engineer, definitely you can come into uh, limelight and definitely you people are uh, like, uh, I have uh, one motto of this one, why we would like to educate our uh, civil engineers is nothing but on site, the mastery is taking care of everything and the civil engineers, so whoever is having a VTEC or MTEC degree, they are unable to handle the situation. So if you have a thorough knowledge along with the uh, subject knowledge, then definitely you people will be having uh, a great uh, idea about this concrete technology. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinay, yeah, for giving this opportunity. One, one more question is left over here. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what we have to do to reduce the deflection and increase the stiffness in case of if the member is uh, uh, casted or uh, done with uh, SEC, that is uh, like self compact concrete. How we can reduce the deflection and uh, increase the stiffness uh, if the member is a uh, 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 structural member is uh, um, done with SEC? Yes, if the structural member is done with SEC, yeah, we know. If I talk uh, regarding this, it takes a lot of time, but however, I will try to uh, give a brief answer about this. If you compare normal concrete and self compacting concrete, uh, definitely the deflection is slightly high for self compacting concrete. Uh, 
Why? Because there is a slight reduction in the stiffness of self-compacting concrete-based specimens compared to normal concrete-based specimens. So to decrease this, obviously the option is nothing but you have to uh, give the high strength to our cement base. So how can we do? Add super, uh, like uh, you can add uh, steel fibers or you can add any type of fibers, then these fibers will take care of this. They can, yes, they can increase the stiffness and they can reduce the deflection. Yes, sir. We can use crypto fibers also. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, definitely. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Rajeshwari Madam and Dr. Shiram, sir, for having such a nice uh, uh, informative session on self compacting concrete and self curing and self compacting concrete on the day four. So, really. It's an immense pleasure to have you to have here and uh, to deliver such a uh, lecture series uh, for the day four. So thank you participants and thank you for participating in the day four session. And now the day four session is uh, ended. Thank you.